innovation doesn't happen in institutions. Innovation is very personal. Innovation happens with people. It is very face-to-face. -face. We all know this. Right? And there's you know, a various approaches to this. We hear many today. You know, some very thoughtful things said already. Um, I want to look at what's called great group theory, because typically innovation occurs in groups. Discovery, invention can be solo. But that next stage, that innovation stage, is typically group oriented. It's uh, great. The group thinks that it's won a mission from God. Right? This is religious fervor to really do innovation. It's hard. And the group wears blinders, right? They focus on the mission and, and rule out everything else. They have to be optimistic. They can't be realistic. They are islands, right? Optimally organized <coughs> as islands, right? And protected islands, right? You've got to get that team away from the bureaucracy and the suits and protect them so that they can work on their mission. But they've got to have a bridge back to the mainland. In, other words, in order to be successful, they have to have a bridge back to the leadership that can effectuate their decisions. This model doesn't fit the next generation of a problem. So the darker rules and the great group theory, they are no longer enough. I think they're prerequisites, but they are no longer enough. Because we now face a problem of innovating in not simply open territory, but established. So let's think about the way in which we do innovation in open territory. Right. Uh, here's, a, uh, here's the iPod. Right? It brings new functionality. It's a crossover. Right? It brings a nice MP3 player with a totally different way of organizing music. Right? Uh, it brings new functionality about it. You know, before the iPod, Using an MP3 player was a crime because you were violating copyright laws, right? This made it legal to listen to music again. Um, it's an innovation into open territory. There was nothing quite like this before. 